it up. <laughs> I got to put up on my own too. Really good. One, two. All right. Some water come. We talked to her yesterday, but I don't think she would come. Resource for the battery, right? 
I will be emailing them tomorrow. Say, send us two interns. Uh-huh. <laughs> and y'all fail. <failed. laughs> <laughs> That's what the need we need. We'll, and then I'd like, we're a small church. We're better than the half church. That would be a blessing from God. <laughs>
got milk right after the milk came to the table. I don't know if they got it. Hey, thank you.
Good morning, friends, and welcome to First Christian Church. Uh, uh, Stephen is going to be our IT man and get that fixed <laughs> for Facebook Live for us. Uh, so those who are viewing at home can uh, see service this morning. Uh, but it's so good to see all of you this morning in worship, and Happy New Year to you. Amen. Uh, it is a blessing to be able to cross over to a new year and uh, be alive and well. Amen. And I, I was laughing. I made a joke with my sister this week. Uh, she came down with the baby and surprised her this week and, and surprised the family. And good to see But I, I was joking with her and I said, well, you know, I, I came in the new year to just want to be uh, crippled. Amen. So I tell you, uh, what a great way to start off the year. But uh, I'm excited about uh, this year <clears throat> and what is the possibility of what God is doing in us and through us and for us. And I hope that you're looking forward to this great year this year. I want to bring attention to a few announcements for us this morning. Uh, 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 it's printed in our bulletins, if you'll look on the back. Uh, we're kicking off our capital campaign starting this month, and so this will be Commitment Month, and today we kick off with Commitment Sunday, and then we'll begin, each Sunday we'll have some uh, area of, of, of talking about our capital campaign and our commitment to serving here at the church. And so uh, you'll get information each week, and uh, at the end of this month you'll get a card to fill out, um, to, to give your commitment to what we're doing this week. And there's an information card should be in your bulletin about what we're doing here for the capital campaign. We call it the Phoenix campaign because we're rising out of the ashes and we're going to rise together. So we're excited about that. So please make note of that and be praying with us on this journey uh, for our capital campaign. We have a goal of $75,000 uh, so we can complete the work. That seems like a big chunk of money, but with all things God has... With, all, wait, with Christ, all things are possible. That's what I want to say. And so we, uh, we know that we can do it over the next year and a half. Uh, we're trusting God to make uh, this possible. Uh, on this Saturday, as previous planned, uh, we will have our Better Together session. Uh, those of you who wish to serve in certain capacities here at the church or just want to be a part of us getting better together, I invite you to come this Saturday at 10 a.m. We'll be in the Fellowship Hall uh, to grow and study together and learn all we can as we make this church better and as we grow together as a family of faith. So uh, we ask that you please come this Saturday at 10 a.m. to join with us. Uh, and we're going to be doing these uh, every other month. Uh, and you'll get the full church year calendar this month as well. As I mentioned last Sunday, uh, I, I was going to have it for you this week. But unfortunately, I ran out of ink on the printer. Uh, so I've got to go back, get some ink, and get that taken care of so I can print the rest of the booklets. Uh, but you'll get a vision booklet for the year, which will include the calendar and other information about what we're doing here at the church and what we have talked about and what we're looking for God to do in us this year. Um, as always, we ask that you please be a ble best blessing to the blessing box. Uh, there are some sheets out there like this, or some gold looking sheets that you can get to get information about where you can give, what you can give to help us to continue to be a blessing to our community through that blessing box. Uh, those are all the announcements I have today. There are a few others on the back of the bulletin that you can take heed to. Please uh, govern yourselves according to those announcements this morning. I do want to make mention that tomorrow at 11 a.m., uh, the graveside services of our beloved Brother Tom will be at Magnolia uh, 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 Park Cemetery. And uh, those of you who would like to be with us tomorrow at 11 a.m., we invite you to join us there as we uh, celebrate the life of Brother Tom as well as support the family. And then there will be a small fellowship and repast here at the church uh, right after the service. And uh, we're looking forward to coming fellowshipping together on uh, tomorrow and uh, celebrating such a well-deserved life. And we uh, thank God for Brother Tom and all he has been to us. And we're praying definitely for the family. All right, those are all the announcements I have for us. And let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God and lift up our hearts to God this morning as we sing our core call to worship. Uh, for our capital campaign, this is going to be our uh, theme song for our capital campaign because there's a verse in this particular song that says, out of the ashes we rise. And I think that's appropriate for us as we continue to remember the faithfulness of God and the blessings of God. And so uh, Sue's going to play it one time through for us. And then we're going to sing this every week, uh, the chorus at least, and then we'll introduce the verses over time so we can learn and grow together and learn something new and exciting. But this will be our theme song as we uh, make it a prayer to us and, and, and a reminder of the faithfulness of God to our spirit. So the song is Our God is Greater. If you've never heard it by Chris Tomlin, I invite you to go on YouTube or, or, or whatever outlet you use to hear this song 
uh, it is a beautiful song. So uh, let's sing with uplifting voices. As Sue plays it one time through for us, we'll sing together. <laughs> song in our spirits that our God is greater. And as we seek to do great work here in the church, that needs to be in our heart. That our God is stronger. Our God is greater. Our God is higher than any other. And he is a healer. He is awesome in power. And what a blessing that is as we continue that in our spirits together. I invite you to join us in our call to worship as printed in our bulletins. Here, uh, let us join together as you uh, repeat what is in the bowl. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Lift up your hearts and look around. Come, let us worship God of light and joy and peace. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing hymn number 552. Standing on the promises, we'll sing verse 1, 2, and 4 together. Let's stand and lift our voices to God. Standing on the promises of Christ our King
We are grateful for your grace and mercy that has seen us through another challenging year. We thank you for the ministry opportunities you have provided us among those challenges. We thank you for the joy you have provided us among our losses. We thank you for the laughter we have enjoyed together. We thank you for the blessing, blessing us with the hope that comes with a new year. We are aware there will be challenges ahead, but we are very mindful of your past faithfulness. And we know that you will continue to be with us in this new year. Let us, as a congregation and as an individual, be open to the Holy Spirit and its guidance to be able to love you, God, with our hearts and our minds, and to also love and see others as you see them. Let us commit ourselves to be about your business in the days and months ahead. Help us to seek you each day to receive your guidance, such that acts of love and worship are in accordance with your will and are pleasing to you. Be with us during this time of worship, and may you be exalted in this place. Let us lift together our voices as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. be seated. Amen. Well, good morning, friends, and praise God for you again for being in worship with us, and we're so glad that you're here today with us as we gather and worship together. Um, I don't like the way that sounds, so I'm just going to not use that. Um, as we continue to go forth and worship, uh, as always, we get to share our joys and concerns and uh, lift them up out to Almighty God and be able to share together uh, in intercessory prayer and thanksgiving. And so I invite you this morning, if you have some prayers uh, that you would like to lift up or some, uh, some joys that you would like to share with us that we can share as a body of Christ together and pray together and be in thanksgiving together. I invite you to share that now uh, in worship. I start with uh, be praying as I am recovering on my foot. I recently found that I have a fracture in my foot and didn't know it. Um, and so uh, I'm having fun with this foot. Amen. So uh, y'all know I'm used to moving around. <laughs> this has been a hard week. <laughs> and uh uh, my little nephew was with me, and y'all know he just turned one, and he's starting to walk. And so just imagine how I was going through this week with him in this boot, and uh, he thinks it's a playground. <laughs> so <laughs> he undid the straps and pulling the things out, and I said, oh, my goodness. So praise be to God. I think he added an extra week to me wearing the boot uh, this week. So big prayer for that. Anybody would like to share some joys or concerns with us this morning? Yes. Uh, my dad is home. Oh. <laughs> he's already been gotten upset with his neighbors for playing the music too loud. So he's feeling better. Good. That is a Amen. blessing. Praise God yes. for that. Amen. Yes. I'm happy to hear that. Amen. 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 And um, please keep my family in your thoughts. My grandfather fell a few days back and he has, he's not, I guess he's in a coma hmm. technically. And they're, Start comfort care. They're going to turn off his pacemaker, stop his fluids, and everything. And my grandmother's at peace with the decision, but of course, she's heartbroken. So yeah. well, just keep us in your thoughts. We'll be praying for you all in there. Yeah. Definitely. Any others? Yes. Continued prayer for my sister in law, Ann, and her family. Uh, her mother's funeral was Thursday morning. Um, and with all the rain and all, they were not unable to have the graveside. The rains actually washed the headstone into the open grave. Oh, no. um, so, um, just that kind of thing on top of a loss is, yeah, is difficult. They plan to do the graveside sometime this weekend, hopefully. Oh, my so goodness. We've still got rain coming in. <laughs> wow. I definitely will be praying for them. I know that is hard. Wow. Any others? I know. Yes. I would like to pray for peace in our lives. Strengthening of our faith. Also, 
Father, I'd like to pray for those who have not found Christ, that they find him now. And uh, I pray for good weather tomorrow. Amen. Any others? Amen. Well, I thank you for that, for sharing that. And really, that is a, a heavy prayer of mine as I am praying to Almighty God. And, uh, um, well, I won't die with my sermon yet because this is part of my sermon this morning. But praise be to God. Well, let us pray and seek the Lord and just ask God's blessings on us and on these requests this morning. Heavenly Father, uh, together we start a new year. Uh, full of unwritten stories and <clears throat> new opportunities. Um, together we pray that we can embrace all that uh, this next uh, 12 months may bring to us and what it may have to offer. We ask that you continue to be with us and that your presence be felt in all things, I pray. We ask that you uh, extend unto us wisdom, uh, strength, courage to meet each day and each new challenge ahead uh, full of eagerness, full of joy, full of wisdom and understanding through you. I pray, Lord, that you would give us the courage to accept the uh, clean slate of a new year and that uh, you begin to work within our hearts and our minds and our spirits as we prepare. I pray, Lord, that this year be filled with things that are truly good. And Lord, that you will make us more aware of your presence and your purpose and power uh, for what you want to do through this new season of life. Father, I pray that we'll look beyond the mundane of the struggles or uh, the, uh, and we'll see the blessings uh, that you have of each corner of our lives. May we not be blinded by negativity or worry or doubt or fear or stress. May we not be blinded by that, but may we see the works of Almighty God in everything we do. Lord, I pray that uh, you'll bless us with the warmth of strong relationships, the strength uh, to help those in our community and those that are in need, the courage and the humility to accept it ourselves and our heart as, as we need it. And, 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 and I pray in moments uh, that we will seek after you in all things. And, and I pray, Lord, that we will have those encounters and exchanges with you this year. Lord, I pray that um, as we consider those around us who begin this year, there are some already fighting diseases. There are some having different sicknesses and illness to come in their body already. There are some who are who have lost loved ones and having to deal with that uh, healing process. We pray for those that are, are starting the year with lack and worry and stress and frustration. Those uh, who have uh, trying to figure out how ends going to make meet this year already. So Lord, we pray for them in Jesus' name. And there are a few concerns that we have uh, brought before you today that are on our hearts that we're praying, God, that you'll move in a mighty way. And so Lord, we thank you that uh, we can call upon you and you hear us when we pray. And therefore, we lift up uh, the, uh, Megan's grandfather and their family, Lord, in this time of transition. And we pray, oh Lord, that you would uh, touch them and let them feel your love and your peace in Jesus' name. I pray uh, for uh, Brother Tom's family, Lord, as they go through this season of grief. I pray that you strengthen them as well. Uh, we pray for Sister Ann and her family as they're going through this bereavement and all that has transpired in this time of closure and trying to heal and then other things have happened. And, and I pray you give them strength and give them courage and peace, I pray in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the request that all of us share in our heart that, God, we will have the peace of God in our lives and that peace that surpasses all understanding that it would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you'll strengthen us in our faith that we will not waver to the left or to the right, but that we'll stay steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the word of God. And may the, uh, we abide always in Christ Jesus, I pray. Lord, I pray uh, collectively as a church today, and we pray this on one accord, that those who don't know you will find you and help us be disciples of Christ to lead people to Jesus Christ. I pray that you'll prick our hearts with the compassion of the gospel to lead others to you, to feel what we feel and the joy of Jesus in our lives. Lord, I thank you for how you're just moving all over the world and striking a revival of newness of life through us and through others. I pray, oh Lord, and I thank you for the joys that have been shared of the joy of recovery of Megan's father and the joys of our fellowship of believers and the joys of a new year and the joys of us being able to go forward and you in ministry together. And I just pray that, Lord, you continue to cover us and keep us in your tender, loving care. Lord, I pray that 
uh, all things be new this year and remind us that you are the, a God of a fresh start, that you are a God of new beginnings. And I pray, Lord, that we'll become new creatures again and, and we'll begin today at this moment that we we'll recommit ourselves and rededicate ourselves to your will and to your way. Help us to be the people who choose to do what you have called us to do. Help us to be the people that are willing to be the light that shines in darkness, that no matter the cost, we will follow you. So together we celebrate the praise and we celebrate these prayers that you're going to answer. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody who loved God said, Amen. 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 Well, as always, friends, as we prepare to come to the table, we're reminded of the joy of Jesus Christ in us and through us and for us. And that we can share together uh, at Christ's table. He invites us. And as we start this new year, may we dedicate ourselves anew to him in the faithfulness in him. I have made it my, you know, I didn't do New Year's resolutions because I never do them anyway. Uh, I think when you start making New Year's resolutions, it, it just, well, at least for me, it don't work out. So I just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek the purposes of God. That's what I said. And I said, Lord, help me to recommit and rededicate myself to you. And you know what? I had to uh, go back and reevaluate my yes to God. What did it mean for me to say yes to God? And then my heart just began to be warmed again, and I found him again in my heart. And today, as we approach the table, I invite you to seek after him, return to your first love, and find that joy in Jesus Christ and that passion through him as we seek to go to the table. So as we prepare to go to the table, I invite you to join with me as we sing hymn number 82, 86, excuse me, Great is thy faithfulness. Let's sing all verses of this great hymn of faith and let us stand and, and rededicate ourselves anew as we remember the faithfulness of God. Let's stand together and sing.
pray this prayer of confession together. Uh, and I invite you to join me now as we recite the prayer of confession together. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts so that we may be able to admit to you the fullness of our lives. That which is beautiful and good, and that which is hurtful and hateful. We confess that we do not follow Jesus in all that we do. We love with condition, we judge and condemn. We cast the first stone and keep the laws of the Lord. We do not turn to you as the source of our healing. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive our sins. Empower us to be imitators of Christ in love and service. Amen. Friends in Christ Jesus, know this, that the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. And I remind you of this surpassing grace, that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. At the supper, we look back and we remember the whole story of our salvation. And we look around seeing that we are together members of the body of Christ and we look forward to the great banquet of God coming kingdom. And so on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks to it and he gave the disciples and said, take, eat, for this is my body for you. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. When he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the covenant poured out for many for remissions of sin. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Amen. We join in prayer. Oh God, our everlasting Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather at this table to remember Jesus. <coughs> we thank you for the Advent season we have enjoyed, reminding us of the joy and hope your birth brought to us. Let us carry that hope and joy forward into the year ahead. We also thank you that he was willing to sacrifice himself to redeem us. We ask that you bless this bread and juice to all who partake of them. As we eat and drink, may we be strengthened and made alive as disciples of you, willing to witness and proclaim the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Friends, we invite you to join us as we uh, take communion together. As always, uh, you can receive a prepackaged element. Uh, if you did not receive one from the back, we do have some in the pan for you to receive. If you come down and receive the elements, uh, we ask that you please get some hand sanitizer at the table located in the aisle. Uh, as you receive the elements from our deacon and elder, we ask that you hold the elements and return back through the window aisles, and we will take them as one family of faith together. As always, you are invited to Christ's table to feast with thanksgiving and with a heart of joy and <coughs> praise, as we're thankful for the gift of God through Jesus Christ. I invite you now to come share at Christ's table together. I invite you now to take the body of Christ and take, eat, and remember and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for you for remissions of sin. Take the cup, cup of salvation, feast in your heart with thanksgiving. And we pray that the Lord will pour out his spirit upon us. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may become the body of Christ for this world.
Friends, all good things come from God, the giver of life. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful that all good things come from him. And I'm thankful to God each day that he has created God. And every morning when I go outside and see God's creation, I just say, thank you, Lord. The birds chirping and the wind blowing and the sun, the moon, the stars just reminds me of the majesty of God. And then the gift of life that we have each day. And, uh, and the ability to have our being and to move each day. What a great gift from God. And then all we have to do is just be willing participants of love to him and to worship and adore him. And then we get to do one small thing, an act of faith to him, is to give just a small portion of what he's given to us. And then our seeds that we sow in faithfulness through tithing or offerings, uh, we get to uh, be a blessing to the kingdom, just that small uh, seed, and to do some great work. And what a great thing you have done in your faithfulness and tithing uh, to this church and giving that we have been able to do some wonderful and marvelous things because of you. And so today, as we prepare to give back to a good heart of God, I ask that you prepare your hearts and minds with a joy and cheerful heart to give your small seed unto Almighty God and be faithful to the kingdom work here at the table at First Christian Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand together, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him for here below. Praise Him for the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. As you have poured your healing love into our lives, we now offer these gifts to you. Let them be used in ministry of peace and justice through the work of this church and in your world, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, friends, it is preaching time, and I'm excited to be able to come and share the word of God with you. Uh, this month, uh, we're beginning a new series called Reset, um, as you can see on the front of your bulletin. Uh, resetting, uh, finding a renewed normal. Uh, I think uh, some folks said finding a new normal, but it's a renewed normal. And I uh, want to challenge us as we start this new year with the freshness in God and with the power of his word in our lives as we go forward. And so I began to pray months ago, what would God have me to say to you uh, as we transition for this new year? And uh, this scripture and uh, um, um, uh, this text this text came to mind and this topic came to mind and other topics that I will share with you this month uh, as we hear God and see where God is leading us as we go forward in him. Now, the scripture that I've chosen is a familiar passage of scripture uh, for our hearing from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Hear now the word of God from the Holy Writ. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be yeah. to God. Father, I pray that you'll pour your spirit on me now as I preach your word. Let us hear from heaven clear and concise that we may grow and be faithful in through your word and be what you have called us to be, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin the year, I want to uh, talk about uh, reaction versus response. Uh, and, uh, I think all week long, the Lord has taken me through this sermon. Amen. I don't know about any of you, but I've sure been taken this, uh, through the sermon. And you know, by the way, you know, my sister told me to play a joke on y'all this morning. She told me to go to Walmart and buy a Michigan shirt. You got a couple. <laughs> I thought about that, but I said I won't do that. That's word inside actor. That's what we do. I thought I was going to be funny, but I said no. I said I can hear Brother Charlie now. 
<laughs> but congratulations to you, Georgia people. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But God, we pray. But I thought I'd play the Georgia. See, that's reacting versus response. See, y'all just lost already uh, in the sermon this morning. Amen. But uh, I have been tested through this whole sermon this week because of, this has been a trying week for me. I know I know it has. And these are one of these weeks I had to really uh, believe what I preach. Amen. You ever had a moment God make you believe what you read, you know, Amen. what you say you believe in? I had one of those weeks this week, and I really had to seek the Lord in that. And in that, the Lord just brought to my remembrance. He said, remember what you're preaching about. And so I looked up some things, and I thought about what is reaction and what is response. Reaction is instant. It is driven by beliefs, biases, and prejudice of the unconscious mind. When you say or do something without thinking, that's the unconscious mind running the show. Uh, a reaction is based in the moment. It doesn't take into consideration long-term effects of what you do or say. And a reaction is, uh, I, what I looked up was a survival-oriented kind of move. It's on some level of a defense mechanism, you know, uh, it might turn out okay, but often a reaction is something you regret later. And I know there's some of you got some witnesses that you have reacted in some way that you just can't take back. You don't done it now. You go, oh my God, I wish I didn't say that. I wish I didn't do that. But your unconscious mind begins to speak up for you. And I think sometimes we don't think about that and how we react and respond. Uh, but it just happens so quick. And so you think about response. On the other hand, it usually comes more slowly. My grandma used to teach me the scripture be quick to hear and slow to speak. You ever heard that scripture? And so I, I, I had to, my grandma used to say that to all, me, all the time. And I'm like, what are you talking about, lady? I don't understand that. But now that I'm older now, I go, oh, it comes, a response comes slowly. It's based on information from both the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. I, I really call it a, a wisdom gift, if you will. Um, a response will be more, uh, what's the word, ecological. That's a word I learned fancy in school. Uh, it, and that means that uh, it takes into consideration the well-being of others. Ooh, does that sound like the world? Do we really take in the well-being of others? Do we really think about that? You know, as Christians, we're supposed to because we're supposed to have the compassion of God. But I'm learning, let us get in some situations and that compassion just drops off the face of the earth and we re react versus response. A response. It weighs a long-term effect and it stays in line with our core values of the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, it stays in line with what we say we believe, what we say we hold to be our truths according to God or what we call the principles of our faith, right? Our reaction and response may look kind of the same, but they differ in a lot of ways. And here's some questions I want to ask you. This is how to determine if you react or if you respond. Here, are y'all ready? Here we go. Do you panic a lot? Mm. Uh, or is worrying a common response for you? Do you have anxiety a lot? Is stress your best friend? If I go on your phone, stress will be your first dial, your first little, uh, best friend number, right? Is stress your best friend? Does everything frustrate you so easy? I mean, before you know it, you mad, you're this and that, just everything. It could be the small, I drop my pencil. Ah! You know, it does that. Everything frustrates you. It is, it, is it easy for you to cry about things that uh, are so easy? Are, are you one of those ones that at the break of a dime, you'll cry because it just, you know, you just you made me mad, I'm a cry. Or I didn't like the way it went, I'm a cry. Or, or uh, 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 are you constantly always thinking about uh, what could go wrong? Are you one of those persons? I'm guilty of that. I'll be a witness to that. I'm guilty. I'll think of the worst case scenario of a situation. And in my mind, I go, maybe it'll help me feel better if I think of the bad first, you know. Uh, have you ever heard somebody say, you want the bad news first or the good news first? I want to go and give me the bad news because it'll help me process a little differently. And so sometimes I'm bad at this. I'm doing better now. Thank you, Lord. I tell you all, therapy in Jesus works. And if you don't have a therapist, get you one. Amen. Uh, therapy and Jesus works, so my OCD sometimes gets the best of me. I'm getting better. The Lord is delivering me from OCD. Amen. Uh, but uh, sometimes I get in the car and I think about what if an 18 wheeler hit me? How would I escape? You know, I think about that kind of thing. Or well, if I get on the interstate, I do not like the interstate. I'm not the best driver. I'm not a bad driver. I'm a cautious driver, but I just don't like driving. But I have to. If 
If I didn't have to drive, you know, some days I wish I was like one of the big name preachers. I could hire me a driver, but it, it ain't my season. Amen. But I don't like to drive, you know. So when I get married, Lord, send me a wife that likes to drive. But I don't like to drive. I have my fears and phobias that comes in that because I don't have enough wrecks. Did I tell y'all the story about when I hit a cow? And I had, oh, I didn't tell y'all, stay after church, I'll tell you the story. Well, I hit a cat. I did not eat beef, hamburgers, or drink milk for eight months <laughs> because I was never the same because the story was when I hit the cow, I was inside the cow. And it took them three hours to get me out the car. And I'm sitting there with, oh, I can hear the, uh, the Mennonites who own the cow say, oh, Betsy. And in my mind, I'm saying, Betsy, me. I'm inside the thing, you know, <laughs> you know, and I could see everything in there. What a gruesome image. And I just couldn't eat ground beef or spaghetti, anything with anything to do with the cow. I could not. So because of that accident, I started thinking the worst about everything. And so are you one of those persons that you, are you like that? And those questions can determine uh, response versus reaction. This is not how God wants us to enter into this new season of life in that mindset of always thinking like this and acting like that. That is not God's will for us. That's not how God wants us to think. And so as we enter this new season of life, it is important to have a new mindset. One of, uh, one of uh, the prayers that I've been praying that, uh, Lord, transform my mind, renew my mind. Let me think as you think. You know, the Bible said, think on these things, whatever's pure. Whatever's holy, whatever's good report, whatever's just, what is righteous, think on those things. That's what Paul uh, shares with us in the, in the, in the text. And let, uh, I've asked God to say, let my thoughts be your thoughts and my, my ways be intentional in your ways. How we respond or react is important as we seek to move as God moves. One word that has already been pinpointed into my mind as we start this new year is the word peace. Mm. The word peace. I think we don't realize how important that virtue should be in our lives. Without peace, our lives are affected in so many ways. And may I suggest how we react and how we respond is based on our level of peace. Think about it. When you don't have peace in your life, you, your response and your reactions show how that, that be. Just be honest about it. You think about it. You don't have Because the, the peace of God that's a path all understanding guards our heart. In our mind, and when it guards our heart and mind, it keeps us from responding in a certain way or reacting in a certain way. It's based on your level of peace. And our text teaches us the importance of fruit we must bear in our lives. These are not some random thoughts or right opinion. It's true for our minds and for our spirits. They help us to heal and they help us to be whole. They help us to grow. They help us to increase in God. These fruit become our DNA and are um, uh, a good part of how we move in our lives. The Bible teaches us that we shall walk in the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, we shall move accordingly by the fruit of the Spirit. Today, the fruit that I want to focus on is peace, and then the other word that we hate is patience, or as the Bible says, long-suffering. What a play on words, isn't it? We say patience, but the Bible says, long, depends on the translation, long-suffering. I'm going to say that again, long suffering. Wow, God, what a play on words. If you want me to have peace in long suffering, patience means long suffering. I got to suffer long. You know, that's weird. What a play on words. But if that's the word God gives us, peace and patience. And I'll be honest with you, I think God is teaching us that whether we like it or not, that we ought to be a people of patience. Now, that's a prayer I don't pray. Because every time you pray for patience, it looks like everything you got to wait on. Macaroni that's supposed to take 15 minutes end up taking, uh, making 45 or an hour. You know, you're used to something like, what is that? The microwave, you put it on five minutes, it looked like it took 50. You know, it looked like everything just spaces out. You know, so I don't pray for patience, but I learn it's hard to suffer long without peace. You need peace. And so many of us struggle with trying to find peace and maintain it in our lives. And some days for me, I'm thankful for it. And other days, I take it for granted. Then there are days that I uh, just uh, do about anything to have a little more silver in it, if you will, or some gold in that moment because I don't like waiting, but waiting is good for us. It produces strength. It's, it's a resistance training, as they taught me in the gym. It builds more strength for you. 
And uh, we need that, but oh Lord, some days I just don't want it. Some days I just need a little peace of mind. Is that anybody here? You know, it, and you need it for yourself, you need it for others, you need peace and quiet, that, and, and it helps you to go through life as you need it. And there have been times when I've needed the peace of God, that type that I said that surpasses all understanding, and there have been days when no matter how hard I cry, how much time I spend on my knees, how many miles I walk in the park and pacing and all that stuff, peace seems far from me, but it does come. It does come. And, and it helps me in my responses and in my reaction. And sometimes I've had to ask God before I respond, give me peace. You ever had that moment? This week, my little nephew, Lord bless his heart, he's very active, one-year-old, and there's moments I had to pray for peace because, Lord, especially when he hit my bad foot, you know, I had to ask God, God, Lord. And I prayed for my sister. I said, Lord, bless her heart. she got to be with this active little boy. Give her peace because she got to suffer long. she got 18 years with that buddy in that house. Amen. And really, some parents, you know, you got more than 18 years because some of them you have to deal with more than that, you know. And so I had to pray for peace. It, 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 and so, it, but it does come. It, uh, you know when the peace came when he went to sleep? Hallelujah. That was peace. Amen. It's my prayer that when you're searching and waiting for the peace that only God can provide, that the three truths will assure you to have faith that peace is on the way. And then this three truths I want to share with you this morning would help you to find your way of how you respond and how you react. Number one, I want you to hear this. God has a plan for you. That's important. How you respond and how you act is based on this truth. He has a plan for you. And maybe that'll take the stress away. Maybe that'll take the worry away. Maybe that'll take the fear away when you stop for a moment and just stand for a moment and say, wait a minute, God has a plan for me. Hallelujah. In that assurance and in that fact that God has a plan. And here's what Jeremiah told me. He said in chapter 29, verse 11, he says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace not of evil, to give you an expected end. Expected end means God had already planned it out. He's got your future in mind, but it's all according to how you respond and how you act determines the destination of that plan and that expected end. But he has a plan for us. And sometimes we get away from that plan and God says, hey, this is why you don't have peace because you got out of line with me. 2022, we don't want to get out of line with God. We want to be in agreement with God so we can walk according to the purpose of God. Hallelujah to that. He has a plan for us. No matter how you feel, no matter the negativity in your mind, no matter the worry, no matter the stress, you can rest assured on that fact God has a plan. And that's the beautiful thing. Number two, somebody told me I was very loud when I preached. So I'm going to calm down. Amen. <laughs> Number two, he is your power source. I think sometimes we forget that. You know, when I go in the house and plug things in, I don't think about is it connected or not. I just plug it in, trusting that what I plug in will work. I think a lot of us do that. We don't think about how is this connected unless you've been an engineer and that's in your mind all the time. But we don't walk in and go, hmm, I wonder what red wire and blue wire is connected to here. And I wonder how they pull this strap over here. Did they put this? Oh, the transformers and all that connect. And I wonder how they get it to the power plant. And how this stuff. We don't do that. We just plug in, don't we? Let your cell phone die. And you go plug it. You be trying to find every outlet you can find. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that right, JP? You try to find every outlet you can find to plug in this bit with you. But you'll sit there and you don't, you just trust that that outlet will work. We got to do the same thing. God is our power source. And we got to trust that his power works for every situation of our life. He has a plan. He is our power source. And God's going to work it out. Here's what he said in Isaiah 26. You will, uh, uh, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. <laughs> He's our power source. When we keep our focus on God that I had to get like my grandma say, God's got it. I need a t-shirt that says that and where to give it to people. Maybe we need to give that in our gift package to new people when they come. God's got it. He has it, friends. And that's what we got to believe. He has the power. He has the ability. He, and I know sometimes it sounds redundant in the church, but the truth be told, I think we go home after church and I say amen and give the benediction. And then we go back home to our worries and we forget God has it. He is the power source. And I think about when you go home, every time you plug in something, I want you to think about God's the power source. Every time you look at the plug, God's the power source. He's the power source. And the question I want to ask you, are you connected to it? That's the question you need to ask. 
Are you kidding? You know, I've learned, this ain't in my sermon, so this is free for you. I've learned this in life of the church. There are a lot of people who come to church and say they know Jesus, but they're not really connected to Jesus. Ooh, that's the truth. Y'all don't want to hear that. So the question you need to ask is, are you really connected to him? Because how you respond and how you react shows how our connection to him is. Now, it takes practice. Don't think, well, pastor, you're talking about me. I'm like, no, no, no. It takes practice. It takes time because pastor ain't all the way there. Sometimes in the middle of a situation, I have to remind myself, oh, wait, God has a plan. God is my power. So shut up, Chris. Be quiet. Be still and know he is God. Sometimes I have to repeat that over and over. He has his best will for me. He has, I have to make affirmations to my spirit to remind me God's got me. And he's going to work it out. That's the self-awareness that we need to come to. Here's some questions that you might want to ask for that. What am I allowing the enemy to uh, fill my head with? When you messed up at that power source of God, with God, ask this question. What am I allowing the enemy to fill my head with? Number two, what have I been telling myself and calling myself? Mm. Somehow we act, react and respond if we don't have peace in some of these questions. And number three, what have I been focused on thinking about more than anything else? What am, what am I more, what has got my attention so much that it's distracted me from God? So number one, what are you allowing the enemy to say to your head? Number two, what are you telling yourself and what are you calling yourself? Are you one of those ones that talk yourself out of everything? I got a friend of mine, uh, so I have to remind him of this so, all, the, all the time. We'll present something to him and he'll, he'll do, present three things to talk himself out of. And I look at him and say, did you just do that again? Why do you talk yourself out of something that's great? Well, everything could go wrong. What if this go wrong? What if that happened? What about this? I said, shut up. Just be quiet. Who said? And then I had to go back and say, but what if thousands of things go right? What are you telling yourself? What are you? What is the enemy trying to distract you with? You need to ask that your question. And sometimes when the enemy gets to your head and start putting in your negative thoughts, you got to you got to be with the scripture says, "Bring my mind captive to the Holy Spirit." That's the prayer we need to pray. Say, "God, bring my mind to the knowledge of God and not to the will of the devil." I don't want that in my mind, in my heart. Let the Holy Spirit capture my thoughts. That's what the Bible teaches us. Amen. Then finally, uh, God is a God of provisions. He's a God of provisions. Here's a, a familiar passage that ought to make you shout. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply. Whoa. All my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I need that reminder sometimes in the midst of whatever's going on. God's got this. God's got a plan. He is my power source, so he will supply. He's going to provide. I don't need nothing else. I, I got some deep, 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 uh, deep theology notes in here, but I'm just going to say it like this. He will supply. He will provide. And with God, all things are possible. Some of y'all saw that capital campaign on the back of the bulletin that says 75,000. Woo! He will supply. God is able. He can do anything if we put our mind to it. God's got it. He's got us in all capacity of life. He has your family. He's going to provide for them. For you that's worried about that child that won't do right, he's got them. For you that's worried about your family member and sickness, God's got them. For you that's stressed out about your job and everything else, God's got it. He has a plan. He is your, your power source, and he's going to make provisions. What a good God we serve. So now that I know that, how will I react? How will I respond? Write this down. I've seen your copy of the sermon this week. Take it and go back and put it on your refrigerator. Put it in your car and think about this. Every time you get ready to react, God's got it. He's got a plan. He's my power source. God is a God of provisions. <laughs> He's got it. And then I can laugh with peace. You see that? I can laugh in peace going, whoo. Boy, all week long, I got bad phone calls every day, almost every hour. My sister was like, just cut the phone off. And I was like, you're right, but I still need to be prepared because you never know. And then all I kept doing, she said, I don't see how you do it some days. How do you keep going within the midst of all that's going on? Because I say God's got a plan. He makes provisions. And I know he has a purpose in all of this. And it's going to be all right. And it's going to be great. And I trust God in it. I believe God in it. And God's going to work it out. you got to know. And that's why I'm able to react accordingly and respond accordingly. Because the peace of God comes over me. Soon as I say, God, you got a plan. God, you're going to make provisions. 
and God, you are my power source, all of a sudden peace hits me. And I go, whew, okay, I can sleep. Listen, last night my air conditioning broke. My house was 80 degrees all night. Y'all know I like my air conditioning at 69. Help me, Jesus. And I had every fan on in the house. I could have easily reacted, could have got mad. And you know, my little nephew gives us a lot of body heat and he, he wants to sleep with me. He just finds his way to me somehow or another. And I said, okay, he'll not let him lay in the bed. I boy, that boy got some body heat and it was already 80 degrees in the house. The fan was blowing, it was blowing hot air. And I said, Lord, you got to help me. My leg is throbbing, my, my foot is throbbing from this pain and this fracture. Uh, I, God, you got to help me. How, what am I going to do? Then all of a sudden, uh, Austin kicked me in my face. I said, oh, Lord. Then here come my dog. She jumps in the bed and sits on the end. And then she starts kicking me. And then she got to my bad foot and started kicking in it. Because I guess she was having a dream. And I said, God, you got to help me. <laughs> help me, Jesus. And I had to say, peace of God, peace of God, peace of God. And God said, I got you. All of a sudden, it got cool in the house. All of a sudden, the pain in my foot went down. God said, don't get, don't react. Calm down. I got you. And then I decided to get up and go to the couch so nobody else will bother me. Amen. <laughs> God has a plan. Thank God for the couch. Amen. Amen. Small things like that that you just have to remind that God, you got it, and you're going to work it out for me. That's the joy of that. How would, how, how would the peace of God help you react and, how, how, and you respond? I promise you take this principle with you this week. And you will have a blessed week in the Lord. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, my friends, how is God calling you to respond today? One of the things when I wrote this sermon, the first thing I had to do after I wrote it was I had to repent. There were moments God brought me and reflected and said, Chris, there were some places you didn't respond right. There's some things you didn't do right, so I need you to repent of that so you can be on the right path again. Maybe God is calling you to respond that way. Maybe today God is calling you to respond to go back to some folks and ask them to forgive you. Say, I'm sorry I reacted that way. I was just having a bad day. I didn't have the peace of God, but I'm praying for peace of God between us both. You know, God will make us, he'll challenge us to do some things we don't want to do, you know. Uh, and, and sometimes he had to do it. And I had to call some folks and text folks. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I was reacting out of a bad moment and out of my stress and out of my pain. And that's not what God is. Three, maybe you're here and you don't, not, you don't know Jesus. And maybe you're not connected to the power source. I want to help you today to get connected to that power source. And also today, here's that invitation as we begin commitment month for us here at the church. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I want to rededicate myself first. I want to recommit myself to God this year for this new year, this new season of life. Next Sunday is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, and we're going to do a rededication and recommitment ceremony during that service as I did last year and prepare our spirits to what's next in God and what God is leading us. And as we prepare our hearts to commit to this capital campaign, but also commit to the service of the church, we want to ask God to help us with the peace of God because we want to work in peace. We want to have long suffering, Lord Jesus, so we won't react and respond in the wrong way. And so today I pray that you'll prepare your hearts. And as we sing our hymn of response, are ye able, says the master, we'll sing verse one in the chorus together, 621. I ask that you stand now and, and make your response to Almighty God accordingly as we sing this verse. Let's stand together. friends and I pray that today's message was a blessing to you and as we kick off this month of, uh, of commitment for our church uh, you know I'm going to take this pastoral moment and just uh, think about uh, uh, brother Tom for a second and his heart for our church and the heart for ministry here 
And uh, I know our hearts are broken because he had such a ball of joy for us here. And, and uh, one of the things he said when we talked about this capital campaign, because Tom would come by the office with me and Rita and help us uh, when we was trying to get things together. And Tom said to me, he said, I want to see this church be all that it want to be. And he said, even if I'm not here, I pray that my spirit will still be among as a cheerleader for this church. And God, that blessed my spirit so much and he encouraged me so much. And he was one of the first persons when I first came to this church to email me and welcome me here. And he was also uh, one of the first persons that I thought, I thought he was insulting me at first because I didn't know if he liked my sermons or not. Because uh, he had a way of telling the negative part and then going to the good part. <laughs> uh, so, but he encouraged me so much. And I pray that same spirit of Brother Tom will rest on as we begin this campaign. Uh, I believe that Tom's uh, spirit is with us to say, let's make this work. Let's do what God wants us to do. And uh, I'm excited about that. And we can do that together. And I'm just going to place Brother Tom's memory on this campaign and ask God's blessing on that. And I, I've shared my tears. I will not lie. Uh, because when I get close to y'all, I'm just close to you, you know. Uh, and I just pray uh, that we'll keep that cheerfulness in our heart that he has blessed us with. And I'm just thankful for that. And so this month, uh, I know this Sunday I was going to do something different, but I just wanted to pause for a moment and say we'll wait till next Sunday and I'll give you those commitment cards and that stuff. But I want to give you that information about the Phoenix campaign that we're going to rise from the ashes together. And please read that card about what we're doing to this week. I'm, I didn't get a chance to do it, send out the video this week because a lot of things happened. And then getting used to this boot, it has made it makes me very tired. <laughs> I'm trying to walk in this thing. And so this week I'll shoot a video to give you more details that we can share together about the work of God. Again, tomorrow at 11 a.m., if you're able to come out to Magnolia Park uh, Cemetery to come and celebrate the life of Brother Tom, join us tomorrow uh, there. We're praying for good weather as well, uh, that we can celebrate a joyful life. And uh, also uh, we'll have a, a small repast and fellowship together uh, after, uh, after the uh, homegoing service of Brother Tom. Uh, see Brother uh, Stephen if you want to assist with that for tomorrow. And I want to thank you and appreciate you for your prayers uh, that's been going forth for this family and for all of you. And again, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And I mean that with all my heart that I do love each and every one of you. And I look forward to coming each week to see you and, and to see what God's going to do. He's not done with us yet. And I pray, receive this blessing here, that the peace of God will be your portion and that it will guard your heart in Christ Jesus. And I pray in Jesus' name that every stress, every worry, every negativity, every doubt and fear, that the Lord will break it with the spirit of peace and that you won't carry that worry as you go forth in him. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's sing our closing song together. Can I say something? No. Oh, I was, I tell you. Well, I'm a, let's do it next Sunday. Is that all right? Uh, I'll add it with the baptism. Thank you. I forgot about that. Be <laughs> <laughs> the time that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred's mind is peace of the Lord and please be safe my friends uh, during this uh, uproar of COVID uh, strand be safe in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I would come to the door to shake your hand but my foot is throbbing so I'm going to sit here. If you want to shake my hand you can come up here and see me. Amen. <laughs> yes. Well, we can't yeah. Oh, okay. I got it. Oh, thank you. Karen, what you got? I'll get it. I think I can get it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, boy. Oh. oh, if you uh uh the porn setters are still living, if y'all want to take one home, please take one home. I appreciate it. We need to get them out. <laughs>